Hello, friends on YouTube. So today was the first day of farming for 100 exalts this week. The goal is to get roughly 20 exalts a day. Obviously, some days are going to be a bit less. Hopefully, some days are a little bit more. Uh, you know, check out the last video if you haven't seen that yet to get kind of a, a bearing on what is going on here. These are just nightly recaps on what we did for the day. And I'm going to go over the strategy that I did what we did and the results. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. We're gonna keep these short and sweet. So the strategy today was to farm Lyra Arthane and Valdo's Rest for Blighted Maps. We wanted to also get some heist stuff here and we wanted to run some blueprints afterwards, which we did. And then incidentally, if we were in Valdo's Rest, we wanted to be able to get some June missions and perhaps maybe even sell an Ashling during the course of the farming. For the full setup here, what we have, and so also since this was the first day, I kind of want to do escalating strategies. For, so on the first day, I wanted to keep it as simple as humanly possible. In Lyra Arthane, we have a single tier two exotic watchstone. Rolled this myself for a couple chaos. And then we have a couple platinum ones for more blueprints in the area as well as increased chance for smugglers cash. I have the uh, all of the blight nodes here. So we have more blighted encounters, better blighted encounters, etc. In Valdo's Rest, we have all of the blighted nodes, and then we have the immortal syndicate nodes here. Uh, talking about Valdo's will, is kind of funny, as we'll get into in a second. In the Uncharted Realms, I have Secrets of the Stone, Close Allies, and Atlas Awakened with Thaumaturgical Awakening, as well as Remnants of the Past to try to get some Elder and Shaper Guardian maps. They sell really nicely, so it's often uh, a really nice bonus on the side. Crazy enough, we got almost none of them. I usually get a ton. Also, you'll notice that I have Awakening level 6. You know, that's 5 plus 1 from the Atlas Awakened. What I did is type Tier 14. And then I pulled stones from all of the regions so that only tier 14 plus maps are showing up in Valdos and Lyra Arthane. We do this as well as only setting favorite maps in those zones. So we have the strongest map pool for getting the maps that we that we care about there to try to get really good map sustain. What I ended up favoriting is triple waste pool in Valdos Rest, as well as two Crimson Temples and a sunken city in Lyra Arthane. So here is all the beautiful, beautiful loot. What I did is just took my existing Lyra Arthane maps, ran a handful. After that, we had self map sustain. Um, I ended up just pulling maps out of here that had already dropped. So I just typed Lyra Arthane and I would pull maps out of here, keep putting them back into this tab. And we had beyond self sustaining maps. We didn't have to worry about uh, buying maps or anything like that. And then what for each map that we ran, we would run it with a single rusted blighted scarab and three sacrifice fragments this gives us uh each one of these gives us five percent more quantity in addition to the 15 percent quantity here also i rolled up all of these guys with chisels and elk if it was good enough like this i would just run it so we have you know roughly 70 to 80 percent quant built on the map and then another 15 percent quant here uh, and then I also used simple sextants, the cheapest ones humanly possible. So these guys go for uh, 0.5 chaos each roughly. So they're effectively free-ish. We only used maybe a dozen the entire time. And you can see the loot here. So what are the actual results <laughs> besides looking at this? So I started off with maps that I already had. As you can see, we beyond self-sustained. We didn't have to worry about that. I only invested buying... 40 Rusted Blighted Scarabs for four chaos each. So that was just a single 160 chaos investment. And then you can see that uh, we actually, I, I put them all in here. In fact, I ended up not even using all of them. We still have 10 left. So we didn't even use all of them. Uh, plenty of scarabs left over. Didn't even run that many maps. So looking at the spreadsheet, and I will put the spreadsheet in the description below. We're going to keep it public, and I'm going to have a tab for each day at the bottom here. You can follow along and see what we end up doing. Um, so the top level strategy here was farm Lyra Thane and Valdos. Uh, <laughs> and th this is kind of funny that we're going to have the second line here. What we actually ended up doing is, so, and also what I did is I farmed each zone until the conquerors were ready. I was doing it with a, a faster character that's bad at bosses. And then I switched over to my bossing character and I killed the conquerors, eventually killing Cirrus once. He didn't drop anything good, unfortunately. And so we did one, one Lyra Arthane. Then we went over to Valdos. We did one Valdos. 
And it dropped, I think, one blighted map in like eight maps. It got one blighted map, and I was just like, I'm out. This isn't very good. We were getting one to two every single map in Lyrothane. It was just way more worth it. Uh, we spent five hours very, very, very casually mapping. You can check the VOD on Twitch. I will also link that below. Um, it was it was so relaxed. We were just talking in chat. I took time to open up and look at people's POBs. We did, you know, we did some builder views. I helped people with crafting. It was uh it was a relaxed five hours. Like imagine you're on Discord chatting with your friends, you have a movie up on Netflix, and you're just running maps very, very casually. That was the tone that we set today. And then as you can see with the watchstones, we really only had one that was even helping us a little bit. Uh single rusted blighted scarab, and that was it. No other investment there, honestly. So we ran basically five hours a Lyra with a single set of Valdos <laughs> as casually as possible. And then one hour of heist. That was, and we did it with the blueprints and the rogue markers that we picked up along the way. We did one blueprint of each type that had dropped. So we did enchanted armaments. We did unusual gems and we did replicas. The heisting was not the best. Honestly, if we did not heist at all and just stayed doing Lear Arthane, I actually would have made much more currency. So what are the total results? Uh, in raw currency, here, well, I'll keep the tab up over here. In raw currency, this is, and, and also I am being very, very much on the conservative side here. I want to not inflate any numbers. I am being very careful here. So this this is on the low side. Like this, there's actually probably a bit more than this if I wanted to actually sell things. Um, in raw currency, we're looking at roughly 1.5 exalts, probably more than that if I actually sold the fusings and the chisels all, and all that, but I'm not really even counting that. Uh, I'm just adding up the big currency over here. Uh, you know, stack decks, we have 20 stack decks that go for 1.5 chaos each. Currently, exalts are 150 chaos. Now, in terms of the blighted maps, this is the biggest, chunkiest thing. This is what we were trying to farm. We got 27 blighted maps, and roughly, we're looking at... If we sell them in bulk on TFT, we're looking at about 35 chaos each, which is 6.3 exalts. Honestly, with a, how big of a bulk of sale we're going for, maybe we could go even for more for like 30, 40 blended maps. We could probably command like a 40 chaos price. Um, 40 times 27 would actually give us 7.2 exalts. Um, this is just, and honestly, I wasn't hard focused on farming blighted maps. I did it, you know, that was the main thing, but I was taking my time and clearing the maps entirely and all of that. I could actually just speed farm blights and leave the map. Don't worry about map bosses. Don't worry about map sustain. And you could probably push the profits up significantly higher. The first map that we ran, we did get an enlightened drop. You know, I do want to keep you know, there's going to be rare drops. They are going to be pushing the profits up here and there. But if you're playing over a five hour period of time, and Exalt's going to drop here and there. You're going to get a Crusader Exalt. You're going to get an Awakener's Orb. I do want to count those. I don't want to just take them out and say, hey, this doesn't count, right? Um, I think this is actually kind of expected uh, to get, you know, at least one, one to two X drop in, a, you know, a five hour chunk of time trying to hard farm something. So that's that. Um, in terms of logbooks, uh, let's keep this a little bit more over here. In terms of logbooks, uh, we got three that have Black Scythe Mercenaries. These sell for about 60 chaos each. So this is 180 chaos. And then another one with just Druids. So that's roughly 30 chaos. So we're looking at about 1.5 exalts there in terms of currency. We had two Synthesis maps drop. This is about 120 chaos together, which is about 0.8 exalts. We had one big... Uh, also, we got a bunch of Tujin rerolls. Uh, I, ran, I only ran Danig and Tujin. And we got 36 rerolls. We used them, and we're counting that in our in our profits here. All we got from Tujin really was a uh, a good resonator, uh, a bunch of small currency that that comes in here, but basically just one resonator and 36 rerolls, which is worth 0.3 exalts. In terms of emblems and scarabs, we have two Gildan legions, wing cartographers, polished legion, and a couple other small ones. Bunch out over here as well, which is worth about 0.5 exalts. Um, oh, also uh, a timeless templar emblem dropped. So that's 0.5 exalts there. Um, in terms of blueprint loot, we have a replica in series foible, uh, divergent multi-strike. This is most of it. This is 1.2 exalts from the unusual gems, anomalous summon stone and divergent barrage. All of these together are worth uh, about two exalts. Uh, most of that, 1.2 of that is the divergent multi-strike. In terms of guardian maps, we have two shaper and one guardian, or sorry, and one elder. Those are worth about, uh, each one of these is worth about 15 chaos, and then this one's worth 25 chaos. So that's about 0.3 exalts. Um, in terms of all of our essences, 
I just added that up by going into excellence next because that would be a, a total pain in the ass to manually add up. Uh, this says 64 chaos. Uh, so we just went with 0.4 exalts on that. Uh, in terms of oils, I did the same thing in Excellence Neck, which says 107 chaos. And we just say that is 0.6 exalts. And then in terms of maps, I actually rolled, um, I actually rounded down. So this is saying we have about 500 chaos of maps. I actually rounded that all the way down. And I just said, I'm, take 200 chaos off of that because it's uh, it doesn't count the blighted maps. So we have to we have to calculate that ourselves. And then it doesn't really right like it doesn't properly calculate um, Elder Guardian maps here. Right. It's saying six chaos each for Elder Guardian maps. So we kind of have to just like pull all of those out and, and estimate our own numbers there. So I just took 200 off the top here. And honestly, this is probably being conservative. And I'm just saying two exalts for the maps if you want to convert that and sell these in bulk. The gross result there is 18.4. We invested 140 chaos, which is 0.9 exalts into the Blighted Scarabs. And the net profit was 17.5 exalts. Honestly, for the most relaxed, casual, least investment strategy that we're going to do this week. I'm incredibly happy with this, right? So this is roughly, so on in total, you know, this is representative of six hours of time. So we're looking at about three hour, three exalts profit per hour. That could easily get pushed up to four exalts an hour, in my opinion, if you did something like run much, much quicker maps, run just the blighted stuff, get better watch stones. Honestly, you could probably even get up to five exalts an hour just uh, farming crazy blighted maps and selling them in bulk on TFT. I, I really wanted to show like the least investment thing that you could do, casually running the maps, doing most of the expeditions, and here you go, right? So uh, in about six hours of investment, we made about 18 exalts, and I'm happy with this. The plan tomorrow is to run new Vastir, and farm it primarily just in uh, for legions. I'm I might mix it up. I might mix it up. I don't know. I don't know if there's any value in anything else here. Maybe <laughs> maybe rogue trader. Maybe the rogue exiles will drop something really good for us. Um, I'm considering combining it with some other strategies. I don't know what's there. Like I don't know. Maybe there's some value in bouncing with Glenic or something. But uh, I want to focus on Nuvestir and Legion, and it's gonna be really fun. When I'm and uh, I'm this is pretty cool. I love that our cheapest, easiest strategy was already reach basically reaching that mark that we were aiming for. And the sky is the limit here, and it's only gonna keep going up. And also, I just wanted to thank everyone for all of the support. Like we've actually had a crazy growth of YouTube subs and people being very excited for the series. So thank you once again. Thank you for all of the subscriptions and everything. We're gonna keep on doing this. Tune into the stream on twitch.tv slash subtractum tomorrow to see how it goes and keep on tuning in and following these videos to, <laughs> to see our hopeful goal being reached at 100 exalts at the end of this week. So thank you everyone and I need to go to bed. Bye-bye. <laughs>